now we can see a bit better about getting the inverter off so we've got some uh, where are you there's a coolant pipe there there's an earth lead there a bolt here and a bolt here um, coolant attachment there So I think these are just clipped in along here. So I'm going to unclip these clips here and then do those pipes, that earth lead, take those bolts out and see if it will lift. Right, so you've undone the four mounting bolts, you've undone the earth, you've undone the coolant. You released the clips for this cable that's over there. Okay. Next, we have to take off the engine mount, um, just by the by, the early ones of these, they do get, there we are, where is it, the light is too terrible, hang on a second, I can't see nothing, there we go, they do crack like that, okay, and with everything I've done today, this week to try and get this motor out I'm just going to have to say I wouldn't try it myself so if the mount cracks on my i3 I'm taking it to the garage so anyway take that mount off three 16 mil hex head bolts take this off which has got those stupid little clips they just get a screwdriver flat bait in behind them and then prise them away and then we get to this cover and we have these, I think they're T30s. So we've got to take this little plate off next. And then this is what we find underneath. So we need to disconnect these connections here, which will allow us then, hopefully, to pull the inverter upwards. So I'm trying to block the sun out with my ample shoulders. Uh, right, so these two connectors been undone, and then we've got the three main power uh, connectors going from the inverter to the motor so they've been disconnected and now we can lift the inverter off today we're attempting to separate the motor from the rex engine so the first port of call is to maybe try and get some of this stuff off because uh, might be hiding some bolts and whatnot. So a uh, flat blade screwdriver under these clips and just pull them up out of the way and then we can replace, remove all this uh, black insulation, soundproofing, whatever it does. Right, so this insulation goes underneath this uh, cradle that holds the inverter up. So let's take that cradle off. Bizarrely, that's actually Allen keys. These clips that attach the coolant pipes get quite stuck to the rubber, so they might need a little bit of lubrication or gentle persuasion. Right, so it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a seventh right down and underneath there so we'll go and get our sockets and get them undone no stupid sod right clearly taking out the wrong bolts aren't i 
let's put them back in so these are the bolts that attach the motor to like the um, the gearbox so better put them back in and undo the right ones Remind me to find out the proper torque for these. Or if anyone out there knows it, let us know. I'll get these torqued up. So we can clearly see, obviously, this is where the drive shaft goes in. So this is all the, the gearbox, so to speak, which comes up round here. And we've got some bolts here. Bolts down there. Uh, there's more around the bottom there, so one, two, three, four, five. And I've got to get in amongst all this lot and find out what's going on here. There might be another one in there. I'm sure there'll be more somewhere. So I'll start at the left and work my way around. Right, these are 16 mil bolts. Don't forget everyone, if you want to find out how this all finishes, like, share and subscribe. So working my way around, I can find this Torx one here. That definitely goes all the way through, so we'll get that one out. Maybe not the most orthodox way. So there we go. Uh, right, so we had a like a torque bolt going through there, and then one, two, three, four, five, uh, sixteen mil bolts, hex head bolts, uh, joining the Rex engine to the motor. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Fingers crossed, all going well. In the next episode, we'll start looking at how the motor will fit into the engine bay of the Mini.